Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fridge Talks with Steph. We are a rough patch right now, just rigging up my studio and everything. I don't know why I did this. Everything going on. I have my phone currently on one of those iPhone holders for like your car <laughs> mounted on my desk, on like studying with um, my laptop because this tripod is too tall for my desk and I don't feel like standing so motherhood is a beautiful beautiful blessing but it's also a curse because you just want to sit all the time what we are going to be talking today is how to overcome a rough patch with your significant other and what to do if you can't overcome it we all have relationships we most of the time have a relationship as in an intimate one with someone else your preference is up to you choose whoever makes you happy there comes a time in your relationship no matter how perfect it might be that you and that person go okay we all had this happen at least once twice maybe a few times I know I have this is what we're gonna do I'm gonna lay out how you overcome road bumps obstacles any issue you have in your relationship and I'm keeping it kind of general so that you will be able to apply this to any issue that you guys might have your results may vary and your situations will vary it's up to you how you use my advice and apply it to your life I am just here to give you the best way possible to overcome it and improve on your relationship first things first self reflect we all don't take a moment i don't i don't think many people do i try to i literally have a reminder on my phone go all right how'd you do today and it's not a oh you're a horrible person self-reflection is something you should be doing on a daily basis and if you are in a relationship you should be doing it twice as much because guess what now your life is interlocked with another life so then there's two of y'all so there's two lives now you got to take care of right once you self-reflect separate all ego be like okay what's the issue we're having how am i causing it even if you can't really understand it think if you're a guy and you don't know why your girl's mad go did i miss something did i forget something did she tell me to do something and i i just completely blew it off go back in your mind and and really backtrack exactly who you are in the relationship what you've brought what you haven't and what you need to do to get to a better standing in your relationship and if you can't figure it out that's fine it's really hard to look in on ourselves i've been doing a lot of um self-reflection as of the last few months it does get easier with time as i said it's a day at a time process if the rough patch continues and it's not just a little oh you know we're just having a month i don't know i know there's a silly saying which is kind of true in a, in a sense uh, mercury's in retrograde i heard it on my twitter this morning it's like a thing but just because it might be in retrograde you're priming your mind to go okay shit's supposed to go wrong expect it to go wrong no 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 all right that's cool i'm gonna keep living my life that's how you have to live now if this rough patch continues you sit your partner down calmly politely handle it you are direct with it you do not want to just scoot around it or like tell everybody else about it if you're in a relationship you and your partner are the only ones that are in it i don't care if your mother your best friend your sister whoever wants to know about your relationship bye no 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 you keep your relationship between you and your significant other that's it no questions no going to people the only time you can go to or look for another example is when you're looking at someone who has a life that you idolize or that you're trying to achieve and you go okay what would he do either ask them go through their Instagram and Twitter and just see did they say anything about this what would be the best course of action who is this person and what do you think they would do and try to ask them the best thing you can ever do is have a mentor that you can actually talk to that's what I try to be for all y'all now when you're communicating with your partner be clear as concise as you can short but sweet and also listen has anybody talked to someone else and could literally see it go in one ear and out the next me oh my god I can't even tell you how many times I've had that happen to me I would say something that would really help not only me to grow but my partner to grow and it's just one I 
didn't even know what to do. Once you calmly explain this to the partner, have them talk to you. Ask them, what is it that makes this happen or is causing this? What can you see in, in your perspective, not your own, their perspective, and have them bring it to light and be honest with each other. If you are not honest with each other, break up. Don't even, don't even try to be in a relationship. Honesty, communication, trust, and loyalty. If you don't have those four, pack your bags because you're not ready for this shit and you are not ready to help make decisions not only in your life, but someone else's. Step into their shoes. Doesn't matter who you are. If you're different gender, the same gender, step into their shoes. Try to see through their eyes. Ask them to explain it. Let's just say you and your partner, one of you misses a huge event. It's not just you missed Joe Schmo's birthday party that we were both supposed to go to. That's minor shit. If you're in the major leagues like me, you're not worried about going to birthday parties together. You're worried about A, being on the same page, and B, doing shit to actually make your empire grow. Now, once you're seeing your partner's issues and perspectives with this roadblock, it might be clear and it might not be clear on what you need to work on. Ask them, ask yourself during that time or even after, like take a few moments, like a couple minutes and go, all right, this is what this he or she said. Is this what I need to do? How can I improve and try something different? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm -mm, no, try it once, test it out, Try it again, and if it fails, move on. Once you come up to an understanding with them verbally and mentally, then work on it together. Let some time go by. When you are in a relationship, this is not something you just hop over. It is something that you have to work on, and relationships are not perfect. They do not just magically fix themselves. It takes two. And I'm not saying that you have to fix a broken person. Both of you need to be 100%. You know, sometimes there's gonna be a day, sometimes gonna be a little less than the other and vice versa. And you know what? Who's ever feeling that negative energy, take it on the back burner. Don't wallow within yourself. Go out, do more things for other people. You know, go to your spouse and say, hey, you know, I'm feeling a little off today, but I'm gonna still try to be my best. I just wanna tell you I love you and I support you and go kick ass today. I am so proud of you. That's what you want. If you feel like you need help from your partner, like a little bit more motivation or self courage, ask them. That's why they're there. They are in this relationship, not only to love you, but to support you. And that means emotionally as well. If they cannot support you emotionally as in be that rock for you when you need it. Again, pack your bags. Let some time pass and work on these issues together because nothing changes overnight. And if stuff changes overnight, that is it's a good sign, but make sure it stays consistent and it's not just a, oh, I messed up and I'm gonna try to be better so you don't leave me. No, no, no. Habits are formed after three weeks of practice. Let's just say your partner knows you bite your nails a lot when you have a panic attack and he or she feels that not only you can get over it, but you can probably handle your anxiety within you a different way. They're gonna say, hey, you know what? Maybe if you stop chewing your nails, not only we could do something, but you know, maybe I'll chip in to get your nails done or something. Give, there's a push and pull in a relationship. You can't both be pushing and you can't both be pulling. That will make the rubber band break. There was a great analogy my friend had. If you are in a relationship, there's gotta be tension. A little bit, and I'm talking like attraction and tension. There can't be one completely separated and then completely together then there's nothing. Once you have started to work on it together and you see improvements, keep encouraging them. That is the whole point. If you see them slipping, go, hey, you know what? I, I feel like you're, you're, it's not going as well as it was. What can I do to help? You know, make sure they're helping themselves first, but if it's something that they need help from another person, be there, be that rock. Because guess what? In life, there are so many posers. You're gonna have men and women come up to you in relationships and go, oh, I can be your rock. I'm well off I'm this whatever it doesn't matter if they are not ready to be in a relationship it doesn't matter what status they're in they're not ready no matter how many times they say they are they're not now if you've given a chance over and over and over again for the same thing now there's always different things that happen in relationships and sometimes issues do come back but at a different level keep working on them. But if you are still at square one and nothing has happened, nothing's changed, or even you see any progress whatsoever, sit down with them and say, hey, I don't know if this is gonna work. It's gotta be a big thing though. Again, it can't be something little. Like if you don't like the way they chew, just say, hey, you know, you chew a little loud or 
to try to stop snoring when we sleep like I, I can't sleep at all but if it's something significant sit them down and ask them again what do they need to get over this rough patch it takes time to get progress again nobody changes overnight you can only you know not only hope for the best but if they're giving their 100 and you're giving your 100 again that's where the magic happens. Now, at this point, if the person is starting to feel like they kind of sucked the life out of you, it's time to cut the cord. And that's that's really hard to say because once you've been in a relationship with someone, there is an emotional attachment. Even if you're a psychopath. I don't know why I said that. Um, this is very difficult. Even if you're in a relationship with someone for a couple months, for a couple years, there is going to be that sense of pain. And it is going to come from the deepest darkest bowels of hell to make you upset for a couple weeks out of it and sometimes even a couple months and it all depends on how you process it move on and to improve now if you truly love someone you are more than willing to work with them love is a funny thing it hurts even when everybody says it's you know the most magical thing in the world it's gonna hurt you love someone so much you are willing to sacrifice some things minor petty things that you might have done so that they and you can live a happier life that's love. Sacrifice is not a bad thing. It is a selfless act. Only when you're sacrificing who you are as a person, that is a bad thing. You never have this issue of someone saying, because of blank, I don't want to be with you anymore if they truly love you. Now, if they truly love you, you'll be fine. Both of you will try to work it out. Some people try to internalize what they're working on first and they don't really say it. They should be saying it, but they don't. And then the other one goes to make a decision about the relationship before communicating with that person and then it implodes. True love is not a fairy tale, but it's not absolutely perfect. True love won't ever say because of X, Y, Z, I don't want to be with you anymore. That's it, that's true love. Because you not only love them, you want to help them and you want to help yourself and you and your partner will be working and you guys need to be working as a team to improve because this is a relationship and every relationship evolves over time you have to be on the same page with one another you have to trust each other you have to communicate with one another and you have to push one another now once you really understand that this relationship is not working now whatever side of this rough patch you were on you have one mission now it's to get up and to glow up. Dust that chip off of your shoulder and it's time to make the new and improved you. I do a lot of meditation, self-reflections, and I am a huge fan of Tony Robbins. He has a method of overcoming an emotional crisis. And what this is, is you first see the situation as it is and not worse than it is. So if you broke up with someone, you broke up with someone. Depending on how your relationship went, you either have kids or you don't, share a house, live in the same area, have the same friends, they're all gonna be different, but you have to take care of them. Look at the situation for what it is and not what it isn't. Then the next thing is get to the truth and then deal with it. And this is part of what you did in the relationship when you sat down and talked with your partner. When you do this, you are finding that little that might have been your fault, their fault, who's ever fault, and you're gonna improve on it. If it, it was an issue with theirs, whatever, do you. Find something in you that needs to improve. And then give yourself a vision. I have a lot of people who, you know, kind of just say, oh, so-and-so broke up with me, my life's over. I'm like, bro, no. <laughs> Dude, you are in the prime of your life. You still have a chance. Give yourself a vision. It could be a small goal, it could be a big goal. But what I like to do is put a poster of all my goals on a wall so I see them every damn day. And every time I sit down at my desk, I just feel and manifest and then I work for. That's the thing with the power of attraction, I can't stand. People just wish, 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 it doesn't come true. If you grind and you wish and you put that passion that you feel when you are manifesting all of that joy and happiness, that is what's gonna drive you. Simply that's it. Once you do that, find a role model. I have a couple, but my number one is Elena Cardone. She is my go-to woman to whatever the issue is. Her relationship issue, her lifestyle, her whatever it is. Watch what she does. Don't just copy it. Apply it to your own life and improve on it. 
That's why they're here. Role models are here for this reason. We literally give our hearts and souls to you just so you can have a better life than sometimes we do. We will take that bullet of having this certain experience you might or might not have had, and we will do whatever we can to communicate how to make it better, how to improve, how to just be. Now, once you get their strategy, execute it, and then you give more than you receive. So I'm trying to give more by doing these fridge talks, and I wanna do these for you guys because I love you, and I want you to have the wisdom that I have accumulated so far in my life because if I need it, you probably need it. Hell, your friend might need it. There are some people whose parents have seen my fridge talks and go, oh my God, I could have saved my marriage. Do I wish I did it sooner? Yes, yes, every time. But you give more than you receive, and to absolutely everyone, the hobo on the street, give them some. The struggling mother who's trying to hold two kids on her hip and then the freaking grocery cart in the other, hey, ask her, is there anything I can get you? Do you need any help? Is there anything I can do for you? Hell, your own family. That's something I was really bad at. I would constantly wanna give people outside of my family the best of the best. And sometimes I wasn't the best person in my family. And that is really shitty. And I bet every single one of us can do something better to improve our relationship, so try it. Now, I have a huge warning for every single one of you. Do not, by any means, get into another relationship right after you just got out of one. That is the dumbest. Even if it was a flirtationship, as I like to call, you are setting yourself up for disaster and whatever relationship you have after that for disaster. Because the time you have after a breakup is the most valuable time you will ever get in your life. This is when you get to work on you. This is when you get to do the things you never thought you could do. Discover a new side of you. This will also not give you any chance to do the development you need to do on your own. And we all need to grow. Life is an ever evolving storybook of what the hells. And guess what? Each chapter, you're gonna have to grow up and level up. There's no ifs, ands about it. Here's a couple things you should not be doing when you're on a glow up. Instantly getting in another relationship, dwelling on the past, focus on your insecurities and then make them even worse. Sitting and doing nothing. Continuing the way you lived while you were in that relationship with that person. So if you had a certain lifestyle and that person was in it and you keep living that life just minus them, that's not really good. That's kind of instilling bad energy and keeping you suffocated in that relationship. Read old texts. Go through your photos, drinking excessively. Don't, just don't do it. You'll regret it. Do not by any means drink to excess. And then never binge eat. Because guess what? You're just gonna start a whole bunny hole of just terrible habits. And then you're gonna reflect on those bad habits when they really come to light and go, oh, so-and-so made me this way. You made yourself that way. You chose to do that. So now you suffer the consequences. My biggest tip to girls and guys everywhere, if you break up with someone, take all of their stuff, hide it away, and forget about it. Why? Because it doesn't constantly keep coming up in your face and making you feel like shit. Now, if you're the person who needed to work on something, if you were the person who just couldn't make it work because they were either dragging you down or vice versa, whatever, pack the shit away. Hide it, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't do anything with it, and just move on. If it's not in your face, you will have such an easier time working on you instead of reminiscing on all that stuff that happened in the past. Because guess what? You can't change the past, the past is done with. Here's a couple things that you can do to make your glove a whole lot better. You can try something new, accomplish a new personal goal or one you already had, work on a quality of yourself that you don't really like. You have to do it a couple times over and over and over again with different aspects of you. Practice living and loving life and truly living in the moment. Read a few more books, travel, take your fitness to the next level. Start being creative in the kitchen and completely changing your health. Work on self-love with removing your ego and seeing the beauty in others. Step up to the plate with your family and friends and do what you need to do to level up mind, body, and soul. This is going to be one of the most profound moments in your life that will define you. And you get to start over. How many of you would kill to get a second chance with life? Are you going to grow? Are you going to stay the same? Or are you going to crawl back into that hole of darkness and sadness and just wallow in self-pity? No. 
you're not. You're gonna glow up, because guess what? You're gonna do everything I just said. This is your opportunity to grow and be the better version of yourself so that when you do get into that relationship, you are stronger, happier, and so much more confident than ever before. Thank you guys for watching another Fridge Talks with Steph. I love the fact that I am now in my own studio. This is not the official setup. This is the official look, though. Just not with this. I have to get a ring light. I. I have so much to do. I need to build a studio, backdrop and whatnot, and I'm not doing a white sheet. Nah, I'm extra, extra awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me if you could. I also have a Patreon page that I will have linked down there so that I can be able to do all these videos for you and to also work on my videos and do cooler things that I honestly have planned in the future and I'm so excited to do them. Um, <laughs> But I also have Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. I am actually now an avid tweeter, Twitter, Twitter, tweeter. I tweet a lot. And actually I say some useful stuff. It's like mini fridge talks within like 140 characters or less. But if you don't, please follow me on my Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all the platforms. Just so you can stay updated with everything going on. All my fridge talks that I have out for you guys. If you have any questions or an, another topic that you would like me to discuss, please let me know by either messaging me, inboxing me, or just leave a comment down below. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye.